my teammate David Wright. He's missed the last seven games. Yeah, he's getting the opportunity to get back on the, on the field. You look at the pregame act activities he got a chance to do today. That was huge from him. He felt good. He's ready to get back. The team's welcome with open arms, and we'll see what happens tonight. Well, Cliff, on the other side, it's been a tough go for the Texas Rangers this season. They've lost six in a row, ten straight on the road. They've suffered numerous key injuries, but their third baseman is perennial all-star Adrian Beltre putting up terrific numbers once again. Yeah, he's a pro, and he comes to the ballpark to play every day. Ron Watson talks about how key, how big it is for him to be in the lineup every single day. The young guy is on the team, desperately needs him on, on the field, and, they, and they're actually watching him to see what he does. And it's fun to see him out there playing and having a good time. So Adrian Beltre and the Rangers look to break their six-game losing streak. Mets try and make it two in a row over Texas. It's baseball night in America on Fox. Texas Rangers, New York Mets coming up next. Saturday evening in Flushing, New York, as we welcome you back. It's the New York Mets and the Texas Rangers. The Rangers batting order brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live boss. The left fielder Shin Su Chu will lead off, followed by shortstop Elvis Andrews. The right fielder Alex Rios hits third. Adrian Beltre in the cleanup spot. Then Leone Smartine, the center fielder, followed by the catcher Robinson Chirinos. Bottom of the order, first baseman Carlos Pena. Second baseman, Rubnet Odor, and the pitcher, Colby Lewis, will bat ninth as the Rangers face the 41-year-old right-hander with a record of 6-1 and one over his last eight starts, Bartolo Colon. And hey, you talk about Bartolo, Kenny, lives and dies by the fastball. He moves it up and down in the zone. I think the one thing to his success is when it's not flat, he's, he has a two-seamer, and when he has a two-seamer working, good luck to the left-handed hitters. Cologne now at his 17th Major League season, a three-time All-Star, American League Cy Young Award winner back in 2005. He's had four rough starts, Cliff, for the Mets this season, allowing a combined 27 earned runs in those four starts. In his other 12 starts, only 19 earned runs. Yeah, and I think the key to that is he's been around a long time. 
he, he didn't get to the point where he was in a rut. He, he sort of figured it out, made sure he got back to the basics of making sure that that ball moved. And, and he lives, you know, he lives around 88 to 95. And what I mean by that, when he drops it down, uh, he, he finds his control. When, when, it, when, it, when it gets a little, you know, to the 93 to 95 is when it turns, so, sort of flattens out. On the second pitch last night, Chu went deep off Jonathan Neese. His second leadoff home run of the season, 13th of his career. Chu has homered in each of the last two games for the Rangers. We take you back to the top of the first inning here at City Field last night. That's just knowing the zone, knowing exactly what you want to do. That ball was inner half from John Neese, and he parked it. Nice swing. Neese taken out of the game later that inning when he was hit in the lower back by a batted ball off the bat of Alex Rios. So the Mets bullpen worked eight and two thirds in last night's game. Which is big. Carlos Torres come in and you know it's always tough. You get down to the bullpen and try to settle, settle in before you know it you, you get in the game. Knocked down by Lucas Duda on the backhand and Cologne covering Chu is retired. Well, we talked to Terry Collins before the game, Kenny, and one thing he says, athletic. He's a big guy. He's going to move, but he moves those feet. Nice backhand by Lucas Duda. You're taught to keep the ball in front of you, pick it up with the hand, not the glove, the hand, the bare hand, and get it over to the pitcher who's covering. It's always safe when the pitcher's covering in his position. <laughs> PFPs are big in spring training. It's about getting over and covering the base. And Cologne did just that. One away as Elvis Andrews steps in. Back to back three hit games for Elvis Thursday night in Baltimore. And last night here in New York. He's five for 21 lifetime against Cologne, who has had great success against the Texas Rangers throughout his career. At one point, he won 12 consecutive starts against the Rangers. Andrews sends this one to deep left field. Extra bases for Elvis Andrews. His fourth hit this series and seventh the last three games. You see that foot down early, pulls those hands in nice. I talked about the two-seamer from Bartolo Colon, but he's getting ready early. He knows he has that two-seamer. He pulls those hands in nicely. And shoots the ball for a double. For Andrews, his team leading 20th two base hit of the season. As Alex Rios steps in, Rios one for five, drove in a run last night. Two time All Star batting 300 for the Rangers this year. Andrews takes his lead off second. And Cologne misses away, ball one. You talk about the drought that the Rangers are in, coming in, losing five of, you know, you know, five games on this road trip, six. And, you, you know, the one thing is leaving guys on base, getting guys in position to score runs, but leaving them out there. You have to be able to capitalize at some point if you want to win, a, if you want to end a drought like this. Now one and one on Rios. The Rangers swept in a four-game series in Baltimore. Lost the series opener last night. Six straight defeats overall. Ten straight on the road. Yeah, that's the key. You have to win on the road. You have to be able to go into a building and win a game so you can get the confidence. You, you, you let yourself breathe a little bit. You come in, and it gets you it gets you to relax. It takes a monkey off your back a little bit. Rangers have been outscored during this ten-game road losing streak, 61 to 30. That's not going to cut it. Rangers won at least 90 games each of the last four seasons. Made it to the World Series in 2010. And again in 2011, decimated by injuries this year. Fair ball into left field. Coming home is Andrews. In at second is Rios. The Rangers take a 1-0 lead. And then, uh, there it goes. So let's let everybody relax a little bit. You get a run on the board in the first. Kobe Lewis now can go out there in the bottom half uh, with, with, with a lead.
Well, you start him off with a slider. And he comes back with it, barely fair down the line as D. Wright watches it. Jeff Joyce, third base umpire, with the fair signal. 37th run batted in for Alex Rios. Back to back doubles for Andrews and Rios. And now Adrian Beltre. Talked about Beltre during our open, batting 336, second in the American League. Leads the Rangers at home runs and runs batted in. He went deep last night. Has a hit in eight consecutive games. He's just a stud. You watched last night's game. Slider, dead center. You see Granson goes back and put that one on the board. Ball was mashed. <laughs> Career home run number 386 for Adrian Beltre last night. Cologne wins the battle, two away here in the top of the first inning. This is that fastball I talked about. Comes back over the plate. Beltre can't get to it. Nice pitch by Bartolo. So with two outs, here's Martin. The Rangers. Center fielder. One for eight lifetime against Bartolo Colon. Martin, 26 years of age, out of Cuba. Batting 271. And you talk about decimated by injuries. When you when you talk about missing guys in, in, in the lineup. You know, Martin, good player, but he shouldn't be protecting Adrian Belcher. You know, you, you miss Prince Fielder, that big bat in your lineup, and, and you look at the season and you go, well, this is why they're in that drought. This is why you have guys that you're asking to step up, but you hope they don't put too much pressure on themselves to go out there and, and try to take over a team. Fielder playing only 42 games. Rangers also without... Dirksen Profar, Mitch Moreland, Giovanni Soto on the comeback trail. And a couple of pitchers, including Derek Holland. Yeah, I don't care who you are. You're just not going to win when you're missing these big bats and big pitchers. That's your ace in the middle right here, as you see with Derek Holland, trying to get him back on the field. Uh, we talked to, you know, Wash before the game. He's like, listen, until he's ready, uh, he's not going back out there. So that, that, that's the big key to this, this season for them is getting guys back on the field as soon as they can. Rios, the runner on second. He drove in the Rangers run. Back-to-back -back doubles for Andrews and Rios off Bartolo Colon here at the top of the first inning. One two to Martin blocked by Darno. He couldn't find it. Rios holds. The 2-2 from Cologne, just missing away. The count is full. The pitch, 82 mile an hour changer. Talk about the two seamer. You talk about the change up. The ball moves all over. When he having success, that pitch right there is key for him. Ball four, so Martin heads down to first. Runners on first and second with two away for catcher Robinson Torinos. Keys to the game, Cliff, brought to you by the Lincoln Motor Company. Yeah, you look at Texas in the drought. You come in here, you haven't won a game yet. Uh, you're off to a good start. You, you won zero in the top of the of the first. And the Mets, get them in. You know, you're hitting 228 with runs in scoring position. You're getting guys on base. You, you have 303 walks. 
lead, you know, leading the National League, but you can't get guys in from third base less than two outs. You're not going to win many ball games that way. First pitch to Torinos in for a called strike. Nothing in one. Two on, two out. One run in here at the top of the first inning for the Texas Rangers as Torinos takes strike two. Torinos in his 14th professional season, spent 10 years in the Cubs organization. Played briefly in Tampa. Seven hits in his last 18 at bats. Sometimes you gotta stick it out. Never know what can happen. Get opportunity, take full advantage of it, especially in that Warren Washington locker room. Talking to him before the game, man, I was in, as intense as I've been <laughs> in a long time. Just getting a chance to sit there and, and, and chat with him. We talked about how tough a year it's been, although did not use the injuries as an excuse. Nope. Playing a lot of young players. He said we're fighting for consistency. But you're also seeing some guys get an opportunity to play. Ken. And I think that's the key when you, you know, when you're decimated by injuries and you're getting guys opportunities, he wants these guys to take advantage of not to be, you know, uh, just happy to be in the big leagues, not to be complacent, but to come out and play the game every single day between your lines and leave it on the field, but also think about it when you leave the field. One, two from Cologne. Deep right field. Over the head of Granderson. It's gone. A three run home run off the bat of Robinson Torinos, his eighth of the season. The Rangers lead 4 0. And that ball just took off. You see Granderson take, you know, taking this route. He, take, he gets on the burners, and that ball just took off on him. A little too soon, it came back, got too much of the plate. Torino stays on that ball and drives it to right center for a three run home. See what I mean? Granson looks up. He thought he has a beat on that ball. That ball just takes off. As I said before the game, he, he lives and dies by the fastball. These guys on Texas, they knew that coming in. That's a scouting report. If you can get to that fastball, you better hit it early. Torino's got it. 13th home run allowed by Colon this season. Mets now employ the shift against the veteran left-handed hitter Carlos Pena. Who went to spring training with the Angels was released in late March. Signed by the Rangers played in only seven minor league games. Was sitting at home relaxing. We got the call. He's actually out you know, over MLB Networks. We thought he was coming in. He grounds out into the shift. Pena now 0 for his last 19, but the Rangers take a 4-0 first inning lead. Home run number eight off the bat of Robinson Chirinos.
Mets in the top of the first inning. Lead the New York Mets 4-0. Mets batting order brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live boss. Curtis Granderson will lead off. Followed by Daniel Murphy, then David Wright. Bobby Abreu in the cleanup spot. First baseman Lucas Duda hits fifth, then center fielder Juan Lagares. Bottom of the order, Travis Darno, Ruben Tejada, and the pitcher Bartolo Colon. As the Mets face 34-year-old right-hander Colby Lewis, record of 5-5. Five and five. He was the Rangers' opening day starter in 2012 and then missed all of last season due to elbow and hip surgeries. Jay has definitely dealt with, you know, some injuries, but he's, he's out there fighting. He's out there giving you all he has. He has to get through the early innings. How does he do that? Well, he has established his fastball to get to his secondary pitches. If he can do that and keep his pitch count down, uh, it'll, it'll allow him to stay deeper into this ball game and take some pressure off that bullpen. That's right. Manager Ron Washington told us he's had trouble getting outs early in the game. That will be a key for Colby Lewis tonight, pitching with a 4 nothing lead. Sometimes that's, that's a little bit harder. You get the lead, you want to hold on to it. You, you're too careful, so we'll see how he handles it. Curtis Granderson leading off for the Mets, the three-time All-Star. A double in four at-bats in last night's game. Granderson falls behind, nothing in two. He'll be followed by Daniel Murphy and then David Wright here in the bottom of the first inning. Well, typically, you don't see the shift on your leadoff guys <laughs> when they come up. Normally, you see it on power guys, but Granderson is a power hitter just hitting in the leadoff spot because Terry Collins doesn't have a guy to put up there consistently. So uh, he has to fill the void, and he's been doing a tremendous job. Hit 43 home runs for the Yankees two years ago. Pops it up to the left side of the infield into the shift. One away. As the catch is made by the third baseman, Adrian Beltre to retire Curtis Granderson. The Game Changer profile brought to you by T-Mobile, official sponsor of Game Changers. That second baseman, Daniel Murphy, leads the National League in hits with 104. He's tied for fourth in multi-hit games, and he has hit safely in 66 of the 84 games he has played in this season. Well, he's always been able to hit. I think the one thing with, with Daniel Murphy has been can he play consistent in the field with his gloves? So to, to, to look at him now on the field, you know, getting better on the defense, he's turned himself to an everyday baseball player. He also leads the National League in first inning hits with 27. Looking for number 28, bloop into shallow left. And the catch is made by the shortstop, Andrews, for out number two. For Colby Lewis, it's his 15th start, record of 5-5 five and five this season. He will now face David Wright, who returns to the Met lineup. His first game since June 26th. Missed the last seven with the bruised left rotator cuff. The manager, Terry Collins, told us he actually aggravated it more defensively than at the plate. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him in the field and say how he handles the backhand. That's the one thing he talked to me about before the game. With the bat, he's not, you know, he's not worried about it. So I, I don't actually see or foresee anything when he hits. But we'll take a look. Uh, I know he's anxious to get back. He has some Kyle's webs. And we'll see how it unfolds. But he's, he's always in this mood right here. He's talking about his shoulder. He gets out there, watches the ball in, takes some balls off the bat. From Tim Tuffle, the third base coach. And he pops this one into shallow left. Again, it is Andrews. So a 1-2-3, 8 pitch first inning for Colby Lewis, 4-0 Texas.
Sports is sponsored by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live boss. 4 nothing lead for the Texas Rangers as we welcome you back to City Field for a matchup of the oldest starting pitcher in Major League Baseball against the youngest player <laughs> in all of MLB. It is 20-year-old Rugnet Odor, born on February 3rd, 1994, hmm. when Bartolo Colon was three months shy of 21. <laughs> Here's Daniel Murphy, who makes the play. So when Odor was born, Colon was about to start his second season of pro ball, pitching for Burlington in the rookie league. Well, listen, with Odor, he's basically saying, listen, how am I supposed to get a guy out that, you know, that I have never seen? He, he, he was playing before I even was born. So how am I supposed to get a hit off him? <laughs> but you got to love it, though. That's the fun part about this game. You, 41 years of age is just like, you know what? Keep your body in shape. You still go out there and pitch, still do what you want to do, uh, and still get these youngsters out. I love it. Me being 41 years old, of course. Not a little bias. Someone questioned the body and shape <laughs> part of your comment, although as Terry Collins told us, he's a terrific athlete. He is. He moves his feet. See, I mean, that's the one thing you talk about. They had some situation with the bullpen and young, I mean, the guys down there, youngest, you know, not moving their feet, doing some things. You don't have to worry about that. 280 pounds still, you know, on his feet, moving around. Can't beat it. Really can't. Now facing the opposing pitcher, Colby Lewis who has six hits in 22 career at bats. Not this time. Lewis called out on strike. Second strikeout for Cologne. You know, in talking to Ron Washington prior to the game, he said, you know, last night we scored five runs, but one in five different innings. We needed to right. put up a crooked number. Well, they did that in the first inning tonight. Yeah, that was big. And, that, and you know, one thing you also look at that, Kenny, you go, you know, what does that do for Kobe Lewis? Well, it allows him to relax when he goes out there. Not relax and get complacent, but relax and know that he has a lead. He can go out there and hit his spots and not have to worry about, you know, you know, uh, getting deep in the games and, and, and not having any runs on the board to show for it. Murphy. Duda. A seven pitch. One, two, three, second inning for Cologne, who allowed four runs in the first. Fox is sponsored by the Lincoln Summer Invitation. Visit your Lincoln showroom today. 4 nothing Texas. Bottom of the second inning. At City Field, Bobby Abreu getting set to lead off. 
for the Mets against Colby Lewis. Abreu, a two-time All-Star, 40 years of age, made his Major League debut back in 1996. Yeah, played against him a long time. Played against him when he was really, really good. And, you know, you, you wonder why guys stick around. Is this the love of the game? Had a chance to chat with him before the game around the cage. And he says, you know what? If I can play, I'm going to put this uniform on and go out there and play. Why not? And tribute to him standing in shape and, and still getting, out, getting after him. Approaching 2,500 career hits. Drove it a run in last night's game. A 6-5 Mets victory. Sends this one into left center. Catch is made by Chu for out number one. Congratulations to New York native Eric Nadell. Now in his 36th season as a broadcaster with the Texas Rangers. The 2014 Ford C. Frick Award winner. He will be up in Cooperstown later this month. Longest tenured broadcaster in franchise history. Eric told me before the game his speech <laughs> is just about ready. <laughs> the pressure that comes along with that, right? 36 <laughs> years. Wow. Congratulations, Eric. Grew up in Brooklyn. Back in New York for this interleague series. It's the Rangers' first ever trip. To City Field this weekend. Lucas Duda went deep in last night's game. By the way, three Mets broadcasters have been Ford C. Frick Award recipients. Bob Murphy, Lindsey Nelson, and our former colleague Tim McCarver back yeah. in 2012. Definitely enjoy listening to Tim McCarver for so many years. And other ones as well. But more so in, in, in my in my time, uh, you know, when, when you listen to Tim McCarver, it seemed like you learned something every game. Absolutely. And of course, our colleague Frank Thomas in the studio tonight with Kevin Burkhart heading yeah. to Cooperstown to be inducted later this month as well. The big hurt, you know, played so many years. Did the right way every time he stepped on the field. And I think the one thing, you know, he, he texted me after my after my first game was like, slow down, big fella. <laughs> <laughs> on the ground to the right side into the shift. And the throw pulls Pena off the bag. So the Mets have their first base runner. It's an infield single for Lucas Duda. Well, you look at that shift and you always wait. You know what? If they was playing regular depth, that ball's right at the second baseman. But that's the chance you take. You, you look at the shift, as I say. You see Andrews lay out, and then you go, well, can Odor get that? Well, you know, it's a harder throw for him. That He's out of position. So so Lucas reaped the benefit of the shift, which you never really hear, Kenny. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> First base hit for the Mets. Here's Juan Lagares. Batting 294, four hits in his last eight at-bats. First pitch in for a called strike. Colby Lewis making only his second career start against the Mets. His first was back in 2003 mm. on June 12th. Cliff, you were one for two in the game against Lewis. Yeah, you know, I was wondering, was I playing? Uh, you know, that's when he was at the top of his game. But you look at it now, th these guys have no clue. You're not going back to 2002 to see what his stuff was. So it's completely different. Um, but that's goes to show you. You know, this game changes and you have to keep up. Technology is a lot better, so these guys get a chance to see a different Kobe Lewis. He allowed six earned runs in two and a third in that game and was relieved by R.A. Dickey, mm. who would go on to win a Cy Young Award for the New York Mets. And to give you an idea of how long ago it was, not to make you feel old, Cliff, but... <laughs> I'm saying, man, my gray hairs are growing up. The number me. three, four, and five hitters for the Rangers that day were Alex Rodriguez, Rafael Palmero, and Mark Teixeira. Wow. That is going back a ways. So Lewis has gone 11 years, 23 days between starts against the Mets. The last pitcher to go at least 11 years between starts against any opponent, wouldn't you know it, Bartolo Colon. <laughs> it's a small world out there, ain't it? Cologne went 11 years, 223 days between starts against the Marlins between 2002 
and May of this season. I should have known that one going back to the time I was with him in 02. When I, when I got traded over to Montreal, Bartolo came in a big trade from, from Cleveland. So it's been a long time. Lewis also faced the Mets twice out of the bullpen with Oakland back in 2007. He then pitched in Japan the next two seasons, 08 and 09. Missed all of last year. Lagaris down on strikes. First strikeout for Colby Lewis. Now two away. Well, Tuesday, July 15th, baseball's best gather in Minnesota as Derek Jeter takes the field in his last All-Star game in what promises to be an emotional and unforgettable night. Special coverage begins at 4.30 on Fox Sports 1, followed by the 2014 All-Star game at 7.30 on Fox. And, and you can relate because when you played in the 2001 All-Star game, it was Cal Ripken Jr.'s. Yeah last one yeah you know what you look at the numbers and throw those in the trash please because you're talking about the captain you're talking about his last all-star game and everybody is coming out to see his last game for sure and i think the last all-star game and i think the big thing with that is you know a lot of guys are, are not going to make it but you have to look at guys like Derek jade and go you know this is a one year uh that that regardless of numbers you know the stud will be there jeter and the yankees in Minneapolis this weekend. In fact, there was a ceremony prior to today's game between the Yankees and the Twins to honor Derek Jeter, but he will be back a right. week from Tuesday for the <laughs> Midsummer Classic. Travis Darno had the big hit for the Mets last night, two run double in the eighth inning. It's good to see Travis making some adjustments. Talked to Terry before the game, and he's moved closer to the plate to allow him to cover that middle half, as you see with that last pitch as he fouled off, but that's the key to him growing up and you talk about confidence with young guys you talk about getting close to the plate well he wouldn't have reached that pitch before he got sent down to Las Vegas AAA uh, you know a, a month ago he's come back with the confidence and you see that pitch right there is now something that he can see as a, as a strike and put some good wood on it he has a hit in eight of the nine games since returning from Las Vegas the 0-2 from Lewis Darno reaches out fouls it back and you also look at that and go well you know does he want to swing at that pitch yes he, he is protecting the plate. To all you youngsters out there, when you get to two strikes, you have to protect the plate. You see the count 0-2. Well, you don't, you, you, you're taught to put the ball in play, but you want to have an approach. And what I talk about with this, this plate, this ball might be off the plate, but he gives himself another opportunity to get back there. And maybe Kobe makes a mistake, and he makes some pay. Due to the runner on first with two outs, bottom of the second inning, Rangers with a 4-0 lead as... Darno fouls it off to the right side. Lewis won a career high 14 games with the Rangers back in 2011. He's the all time franchise leader in postseason victories with four. Well, he was a big game pitcher. He definitely was. Uh, you know, of course, you have to deal with injuries in this game, and, and they sort of derail. Uh, you know, you, you, in terms of success-wise, uh, you know, what you're going to do, but you have to reinvent yourself. Second strikeout for Lewis. will return after these messages from your local Fox station.
seven years ago today, July 5th, 1947, Larry Doby became the first African-American player in the American League, entered a game against the White Sox for the Indians as a pinch hitter. Doby played five seasons for the Newark Eagles in the Negro League and made seven All-Star appearances, was a member of the Indians' 1948 championship squad. Well, you look at that, you look at the seven-time All-Star, you led the AL in homers. You know, you tell, you tell these old guys, no, nothing's changed in, in between the white lines, I'll tell you that. I mean, you know, you play the game the same way every single day, and that's the one thing you take away from it. It's still a baseball game. You still got to go out there and lay it on the line every night. He was originally signed by Bill Veck. And also went on to have a career as a basketball executive with the New Jersey Nets. See, that, that, that's special. So you can switch sports. That means you know a little something about the, you know, you're not just one dimensional, as they say. I would like to do that one day. Kenny, I don't know if I can make it happen, <laughs> but, you know, you always dream, right? Do I get the sense that your hometown Chicago <laughs> Bulls might be at the top of your list? <laughs> of course. Andrew sends it into shallow right. And the catch is made by Granderson for out number one. So with one away, here's Alex Rios, who doubled in the game's first run back in the first inning. When you look at this year, Kenny, and you look at what's going on, you talk about the trade deadline coming, you know, July 31st, you would think Alex Rio's name would have to come up in some of these teams, you know, talks and plans because of the year he's having thus far. And how about Bartolo Colon as well? Yeah, you have to think about him as well. I mean, you look at both teams and go, the Mets are set. When you look at the youngsters they have from a rotation standpoint, once they get Matt Harvey back, you got the youngsters and Zach Will and Dylan G. Uh, Syndergaard is down on the farm, but Bartolo might be a guy that you you might be able to move and get some pieces back to help you offensively. He signed a two-year contract with the Mets prior to this season, won 18 games for Oakland last year. Speaking of the A's, how about the blockbuster deal oh. between the A's and Cubs last night? You're talking about solidifying your rotation, getting two big guys from the Cubs. The ball smashed. Belcher, look out. But that that's what you're looking for. That's the trade you're looking for. You talk about win of opportunity uh, for the A's. They, they, they're tired of losing. And Billy Bean is like, listen, I'm going for the juggler right now. I'm, I'm going to take advantage of an opportunity that presents itself. And I might have lost my shortstop of the future, but I got me two quality guys that can help me there. Beltre struck out his first time up. Behind of the count, nothing in two. Time now for Pepsi's real big things you need to know. And it was a big trade. As we've been talking about, between the Oakland A's and the Chicago Cubs, making a real big summer with three new flavors of Pepsi made with real sugar. Jeff Samarja under contract through the 2015 season. As Beltre sends this one to deep left field. It's out of here. Home run number 11, second in as many nights here at City Field for Adrian Beltre, and the Rangers now lead 5-0. But well, we saw in the first at bat, fastball way, he swung through it, he was a little late. That one tailed back over, and he made Bartolo Colon play. See that two-seamer come back over the heart of the plate? He knows what to do with that pitch. You can't, you can't leave that one over the middle of the plate. Nice, easy swing. Not trying to do too much. Two-handed on the bat. Positive in the left, left field seats. With his home run last night, Cliff, Beltre has now homered in 40 different ballparks, most among active players. Martin flies out to Lagaris in center, but the Rangers add to their lead. Two home runs, the first three innings. First Torinos, and then Beltre. 5 nothing, Texas.
Back at City Field, Kenny Albert, Cliff Floyd, 5 0 lead for the Texas Rangers as Ruben Tejada leads off for the Mets against Colby Lewis. And we welcome in from the Texas dugout a former New York man. He spent seven seasons with the Mets. Now in his second season as hitting coach with the Rangers, Dave Maggot. And Dave, thanks for taking a couple of minutes. Yeah, it's my pleasure, especially after f five runs in uh, three innings. <laughs> well, you know, we spoke to Ron Washington before the game, and he said, well, we scored five last night, but five one-run innings, we could use a crooked number, and that's what you got in the first. Yeah, that's always nice to get. You know, we've uh, we've got a kind of a makeshift lineup right now, and it's always good to jump out to the lead or... You know, Dave, you talk about jumping out to the lead. I know it's not the fortunate situation to have and not missing Prince and missing, you know, a couple of the other big boys, but, you know, how, how fun has it been to work with some of these youngsters you have, Martin and Hodor, and, and, and seeing what they come at every single night? Well, it's, it's uh, while it's bad that we've lost some, some guys like uh, Prince and Mitch Moreland, but, yeah. you know, some other guys are going to get some opportunities. Hodor, you know, we brought up from AA, and Leonis was here last year. So he's continuing to get a lot of playing time. Torinos has, has done a great job for us. You know, hit that opposite field home run, and you know, it's uh, you know, it's it's a it's a different uh, I think tack that you got to take with the younger players, but it's still it's a lot of fun. Dave, is it strange coming back to New York and and not seeing Shea Stadium across the parking lot? Yeah, it is strange. It's uh, you know we came here with Boston. I believe it was the first year of, the, of uh, City Field. I think 2009. I think it was, and uh, it was. It was very strange not seeing Shea, but it was very familiar driving to the field uh, from the hotel uh, yesterday and seeing some places that I lived in when I was uh, playing for the Mets. So it's always it's it's always a lot of fun coming here. Now back on September 17th, 86, the night the Mets clinched. The National League East, and of course, you went on to win the World Series. You had three hits in that game. Is that one of your biggest memories from your days with with the Mets? Absolutely. I don't think I've ever been that nervous in a baseball game. It was my <laughs> it was my first start, and uh, found out on the plane plane ride from St. Louis, we had lost like uh, nine out of ten uh, when we were we had opportunities to clinch the division, and we kept losing games, losing games, and finally we made it back home, and. Uh, Everybody's safe. Mets with two on and nobody out here in the bottom of the third. Cliff will take another look. Well, you look at this way. This is the butcher boy by Bartolo. And you can't you don't necessarily fool Adrian that much. He stays with it. But this is a tough throw. You see him have the double double pump on that ball and he throws it low. You don't see that too often from from the gold glover at third base. Scored a fielder's choice and an error charge to Beltre on the throw with Curtis Granderson stepping to the plate and we continue to chat with Rangers hitting coach Dave Maggot and so that was your first start. Yeah it was and I found out on the plane ride back from St. Louis that I was going to be playing that that night because Keith was not feeling well and, and uh, Dennis Eckersley was a starter for the uh, Cubs so it it was a uh, nerve wracking but uh, you know I was able to, to to step up so to speak and very nervous and I was playing first base too. I had played first base the whole season in triple A so you know threw me out to the wolves. Hey Max talk about you know I try to I try to tell everybody even Kenny up here you know when, when you come to New York uh, and on the field people don't forget nothing. I mean they, they really appreciate you going on the field regardless of being your first time doing you know playing first base whatever they appreciate you going out there whether you're hurt or not you know give our fans a little bit of, of, of how the fans are and, and, and what they're about. Well, I mean, I haven't played here. You know, my last year playing here was 92. Yeah. So it's been uh, 20, over 22 years. And uh, still to this day, when I come out of my room, I'm in the lobby at the hotel, there's always somebody that recognizes me or here at the field. And uh, it's always a warm welcome. And I really enjoyed my time here. I mean, we won a lot of games. Uh, Randerson, deep left field, bounces up against the wall. Here comes Tejada. He scores. Cologne in at third. Granderson in at second with his 40th run batted in of the season. The Rangers lead is now 5-1. Dave, thanks for taking a couple of minutes. Best of luck. Yeah, let me get off here. I'm <laughs> rallying for the Mets here. All right. Thanks, Dave. All right. Dave Baggett and Rangers hitting coach. His team put up five over the first three innings, but now the Mets putting together a rally here in the bottom of the third. Well, capitalized on a mistake by, by Adrian Beltre, you know, in the era. And, you know, you, you look at that ball right there. That ball's traveling. And, you know, you don't necessarily see that early on in the season as here at City Field. 
But as we've seen tonight with Chirinos' ball to right center, and now with, with, with Grandison's ball to left, the ball's traveling here at City. So second and third, still nobody out. Daniel Murphy at the plate, and he takes ball one. Dave Maggot and Cliff, fifth all time in batting average in Mets history. Career average with the Mets of 292. Very modest, but you appreciate the conversation going back as long as he's been since he's been here. But you talk about, you know, how people appreciate here in New York City. If you go out there and do something on the field here, people appreciate this is the biggest stage in the game, in my opinion. And some pretty impressive names ahead of Dave on that list. John Olerud, David Wright, Keith Hernandez, and Mike Piazza, the only four players in Mets history with a higher career batting average as a Met than Dave Magadan. Murphy, shallow left, and it gets away from Chu. Everybody's safe. Now you wonder if the Rangers perhaps felt he had it for long enough. Well, you know, you look at that and, you, and, and Chu, as you see, concentration there. I think he has it long enough, but they have the new rule now. You have to have it and, and make a baseball play. Um, I, I'm assuming that Mike Myers is coming out to give Ron Washington a chance to check it over and replay. This is in real time. On second look, Kenny, I don't think he had it long enough. Yeah, it came out pretty quick. Yeah. So it's hit number 105, which leads the National League off the bat of Daniel Murphy. And the Mets have loaded the bases for David Wright. There's Cologne on third, Granderson at second, Murphy over at first. And this game is so funny. You got your captain back in the lineup. Everybody's anxious to see him play tonight. He comes up, hasn't swung a bat since, since June 26th. <laughs> bases loaded, no outs. Get after it. And it's funny, we were just talking to Terry Collins before the game, and he brought up bases loaded situations. He <laughs> said the monkey is always on the pitcher's back, yeah, never on is. the hitter. 100%. That pitcher got himself in this jam. Don't let him out, up. And right sends this one into shallow left center. Long run for Martini. Makes the catch. So now one away. And of course... Rangers not helping themselves in the field. The throwing error by Beltre, and then the ball hit by Murphy. It looked like Chu had it, and then it popped out of his glove. So not all Lewis's fault. Definitely not all his fault, but you're looking at the, the perennial all-star, the gold glove over it on, on the left side of the screen. He definitely makes that play in his sleep. And Chu, you know, he's played center, he's played left, and you see him, you know, a little disgusted with himself not catching that ball, but, you know, Kobe Lewis might be able to get him out of it. Uh, the Mets are thinking otherwise. So with the bases loaded and one away, here's Bobby Abreu fly to left his first time up. Nine career grand slams for Abreu. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He's been in this situation before, and, and you know, as you talk about the nine grand slams and the 352 average with bases loaded, I don't think he's sweating a little bit up there. Bases loaded, one out, one run in here in the bottom of the third inning. After the Rangers took a 5-0 lead. And Kenny, you have, you have a guy in Bobby Abreu. And Terry Collins, you know, you talk about his age, you talk about him being around a long time. But Terry Collins is very comfortable putting him in, in, in this spot he is because he's been in the situation before. And you're talking about getting back in the ball game. Bobby Bray can get back, you, get you back with one swing of the bat. The 2-0 from Lewis, catching the outside corner, now 2-1. Bobby Abreu, 288 career home runs. He's four for 16 lifetime against Lewis.
Two and two. Perfect pitch. That is a pitcher's pitch. Bobby is not happy about it. But he called it 2 0, so he came right back with it. Stephen Gatton, Doug Evans gave him to him, home plate umpire. Bases loaded, one out, bottom of the third inning. Rangers with a 5 1 lead. Full hmm. count. <laughs> Go to the well again, why not? If you call me Lewis. Payoff pitch from Lewis. Abreu fouls it back. Abreu always so patient at the plate. Walked at least 100 times eight consecutive seasons between 99 and 2006. You can't teach that. You, you, you teach yourself how what that strike zone is about, and that's why he's in this 3-2 count. Abreu with a base hit into right field. Cologne scores. Holding at third is Granderson. 14th run batted in of the season for Bobby Abreu. As the Mets cut the Rangers lead to 5-2, and the bases remain loaded with one out. Well, you talked about the 3-2 pitch before that. He fouls off. He gives himself another, another pitch. This ball gets a little bit more of the plate. See the contact middle way, but the barrels it up for a knock and a rip. See the excitement on Braille, like, yeah. <laughs> Celebrating with first base coach Tom Goodwin. So the base is loaded for Lucas Duda. Duda with an infield single into the shift. His first time up. So Bartolo Colon now getting some rest in the Mets dugout. Long journey around the base pants. Well, he, he definitely needs that, but he'll be all right. You know, you talk about it. He, he didn't have to do as much running as we saw early uh, in, in St. Louis this season. But, you know, I mean, it's still a hot night. So... Get him seated doesn't hurt anybody. Do to take strike two. Third consecutive met to bat with the bases loaded. David Wright fly to center. Bobby Abreu with a run scoring single to right. And now an opportunity for Lucas Duda. Behind of the count, nothing in two. That was a tough pitch. I don't even know how you got, how you got a piece of that one. So a little cutter comes in, and that one usually gets that shin guard that he has strapped to his leg. Lewis has already thrown 52 pitches. One out, bottom of the third. 25th pitch of this inning is fouled back. So Duda stays alive. You see Kobe quick pitches Duda a little bit because he has that leg. He tries to beat him. Ball middle, middle, but, but quick pitching him allows him to beat him a little bit because Duda was not, wasn't ready for that pitch. Left-handed hitters batting 375 against Colby Lewis this season. And Lucas Duda, the left-handed hitter, faced Lewis for the first time back in the second inning, singled into the shift. 
And Duda's starting to figure it out. I mean, you look at his swing, you look at his confidence, it's starting to come. He's still learning the game, I think, at, at a point where he's playing every day. But confidence will come. You know, Kenny, you're going to hear a lot of I talked to today because I was around the cage with all these guys today, and, and he was the guy that was looking me dead, smacking my eyes, and I was telling him about left-handed hitters and us both being big, me being 6'4", and him a little taller than me at 6'5". I told him, you know what, it, it's hard for us big guys with big arms and, and, and long arms. You know, you have to get into the bat. You have to allow yourself to have confidence when you step in this box. Uh, you know, you know it, the odds are against you. He'll get it, though. He has a good swing. He didn't get it right there. Missed that curveball, but... Like I said, he was in that bat, and that's, I think that's the key. Third strikeout for Lewis. Why am I not surprised that you were talking to guys around the cage <laughs> prior to the game? Old stopping grounds, man. This is, this is where, you know, I learned a lot about myself and about the game. Great fans come out, you know, and, and show you love. I had to learn a lot about myself here, you know, talking to the media, uh, you know, playing the game the right way between the lines because they, don't, they, they understand the game. You can't fool Mets fans. Four seasons for Cliff here in New York, 2003 to 2006. Here's Juan Lagares with the bases loaded, now two outs. Lagares struck out his first time up. Mets with two runs in the inning on four hits and one Texas error. Lagares, the eighth batter here in the third against Colby Lewis. There's Beltre who committed the error. Chu thought he made a catch in left field, but it popped out of his glove. He had a chance to talk today right about Lagares before the game, and he was raving about how good this kid is going to be. Uh, once he once he gets his feet up on him, he gets out there consistently. Uh, he should be the Mets future center fielder for a long time. Twenty five years of age already his ninth year in the Mets organization. Fifteen outfield assists for Lagaris last season most by a Mets since and Floyd. Running. Yeah see you know what I did some good things here Kenny I'm telling you like it you know I had fun here but people forget that that I, could, that I didn't couldn't throw. But I made myself into a pretty decent outfielder learning from the first base coach in Kansas City, Rusty Koontz. Taught me a lot when I was in Florida. So I was able to bring that along here and, 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 you know, sort of make the transition and say, listen, if you can't throw, you better make it look like you can throw. <laughs> <laughs> 15 assists for Cliff back in 2005. Yeah. Didn't know it was 15, but I'll take it. Now the one two from Lewis ground ball to the second baseman Odor to second for the force a 33 pitch inning couple of miscues the Beltre throwing error and then pops out of the glove of Chu Mets score two.
by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Here's to Budweiser, here's to baseball. And by T-Mobile. We move to the fourth from City Field with the Texas Rangers leading the New York Mets 5-2. Rangers with four base hits, all extra base hits, two doubles, two home runs, including a three-run shot off the bat of Robinson Torinos. Back in the first inning, and he leads off here in the fourth against Bartolo Colon. We take you back to the first inning with two on, two out. You see that ball middle away, he stays on it, didn't leak that front side, and the ball carried for him. We run home. Eight home runs on the season, six in his last 20 games. Carlos Pena waiting on deck. And then Rubnet Odor. We talked about before the game and during the game that these guys getting a chance to play. Even da Dave Magan, the hitting coach, talked about these guys playing and starting to figure it out. And Torinos is one of those guys you see the homers. You know, maybe not a home run guy, but if, if Giovanni Soto was playing, you probably wouldn't see Torinos getting the opportunity to play like this. So it's good to see these youngsters taking advantage of it. Right into the glove of Tejada for out number one. Time for a game break to Los Angeles. Kevin Burkhart. Kevin Burkhart. Kenny, the Giants are desperate for some offense. They were shut out last night. So why not go to an unlikely power source like Gregor Blanco going deep in San Diego, his first of the year. It's 1 0 Giants in the fourth over the Padres. And Cliff, I've got a question. For all time's sake, did you make David Wright bring your bags upstairs? Hey, hey listen, I almost did, but you know what? He, he, he big lead me, KB. He big lead me and didn't bring my stuff up, man, but I had a good laugh with him. That was all I needed. I noticed that a couple of the Mets players asked you to carry their bags to the clubhouse today. <laughs> you know, for old time's sake, I guess, right? That's what it's all about, man. Laughing. You talk about two clubs have been struggling. Uh, you know, to, to, to win some ball games consistently. But the one thing you never want to change is a clubhouse atmosphere. You want to keep guys loose. And that's why it's big to get your captain back and getting David right back on the field, bringing the guy in. When you look across the diamond at, at, at Carlos Pena, another guy uh, that I played with in 08 with the Tampa Bay Rays when we went to the World Series, he was huge, instrumental in the locker room. You need guys like this. Pena grounded out his first time up. Now two and one. Cliff, I enjoyed David Wright's critique of your first broadcast two weeks ago from Cleveland, even though he did not see it. I, I'm like, how are you going to say that? And you didn't see nothing of it. But that's what we do, man. I, I love him. Uh, you know, I, I love every time I see him. Uh, it's, just, it's just, you know, it makes me feel good to know that I, I was able to be a part of him growing in this game. Yeah, you guys didn't get along at all. <laughs> look, look, you see that? You see, you see that? He has to go to good, then he goes to bad. Pull hammy, like I'm. You know what? I mean, that's part of the game. <laughs> you know, that, that that that's the fun part that I miss. The commodity, uh, hanging with your boys. You can't find that nowhere else. You know? I mean, listen, it's good to be at home, but the wife doesn't bring that to the table every single night that we're hanging out. What about us here in the broadcast oh, booth? This is great. I mean, listen, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else, but. To be able to see that, go down there and do grab his hamstring. Yeah, I dealt with my injuries. But I told him, I said, be careful. You know, you're dealing with a couple of things, little ailments. Be careful. Don't mess with the old guy. Playoff pitch to Payne. He fouls it back. Our statistician, Marty Aronoff, just faked a hamstring injury. <laughs> That's cold. <laughs> hey, Marty, don't be doing that to me over there, man. Well, David certainly looked like he was having yeah. some fun with you both yeah. in the clubhouse and on the field. Yeah, you know what? We had a, we had a blast. I mean, when we, back to 2 it takes me back. I mean, seeing him come in the locker room, knowing that this kid had what it takes to get to the big leagues and, uh, be, you know, to ever think he's going to be a captain. I saw it. I saw, I saw bits and pieces of it. But to be, to be where he is today uh, just makes me smile. 
And today he made his return to the Mets lineup, missed the last seven games. But the Texas Rangers got out to a 5 0 lead. It's now 5 2 as Odor faces Cologne for the second time. Both players about an hour older than they were during that <laughs> first matchup. Yeah. In case you join us late, it's the youngest player in all of baseball. Odor, 20 years of age, against the oldest starting pitcher in Bartolo Cologne, who is 41. You know, Cologne is like, I got to get this youngster out. He cannot get a hit on me. The 0 1, Odor went around, nothing in two. The only players older than Cologne currently active in the major leagues Jason Giambi, 43. Raul Ibanez, 42. And Troy Hawkins closing in on 42. And you look at all three of those guys still out there doing something big for their club. Jason Giambi helping that Cleveland Indians team. Odura pops it up. The first baseman Duda. Oh. So now two away. How about the final out in last night's game? <laughs> See that? Yeah, I did. You know, I talked to Daniel Murphy before that, and he said that when that ball went up, when, when that ball was up there, he said, well, Ruben Hardy, you better stay with it. And he said, uh-oh, I better stay with it. <laughs> Pop up to the shortstop, and the wind took it, what, 30 feet? Right into the glove of Murphy. And you see that laugh right there. And he was he was saying the whole time. He was like, Ruben, stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. Uh-oh. I'm going to end up catching that ball. And he said, thank goodness he caught it. Because he, he, he wanted to go home to his family. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to go home and see his little baby. Colby Lewis called out on strikes his first time up. One from Cologne. Lewis gets the bat on it and singles into right center. So in back to back games, a Texas pitcher with a base hit, you Darvish doubled in last night's game. Well, you know, when, when, when you think about the American League pitchers, you think that there's no way uh, that they can come up and, and get a knock or, or put a good swing on them. But they take pride in going in that cage and getting some hacks in because inner league play is a big part of the game today. And you're going to get a chance to swing the bat. You see that big smile on Kobe's face. He's like, yo, I got a knock. Maybe this can get me some runs on the board. Well, how about this note on Colby Lewis? He is the only American League pitcher ever since interleague play was instituted back in 97 with multiple two-hit, two-RBI games in interleague play. Wow, I mean. No know, other American League pitcher has done that. I think the big thing with that also, Kenny, is when, when, you, when you see his first at bat, you're going, this guy can swing. He took, took, took a nice swing on the, on the ball. They fouled off. Eventually struck out, but you can see the swing there. You can see that he had an idea. That's the big thing with these pitches. Do you have an idea when you step in the box? And Terry Collins talked about that before the game. Can these pitchers, you know, look like an athlete at times? I thought it was a little dab. You know, that was a little, you know, a little, <laughs> a, little a, a little jab at those guys who think they athletes talking about them pitchers. Well, Darvish with a double last night. Lewis with a base hit here in the fourth inning. Chu has rounded out twice. That base hit by Lewis, Cliff, the first single by a Texas Ranger tonight. They have two doubles, two home runs. They're going for the cycle, huh? <laughs> Need only a triple. That's it. Now two and two on two with two on two out. 
Top of the fourth inning. Rangers leading the Mets 5 2. Two two from Cologne. Left field. Abreu. And that will do it for the Rangers in the fourth. They strand two. Colby Lewis smiling following his base hit. Captain is back. But the New York Mets trail the Texas Rangers by the score of 5 2. Rangers scoring four runs in the top of the first inning off Bartolo Colon. Kenny Albert, Cliff Floyd from City Field. Travis Darno will lead off for the Mets against Colby Lewis as we welcome in live from the Mets dugout tomorrow's scheduled starting pitcher for New York, 24 year old right hander. Zach Wheeler, Zach, first of all, thanks for taking a couple of minutes. What does it mean to the clubhouse, the dugout, the guys on the field to have David Wright back for the first time in over a week? Yeah, uh, you know, it's definitely a big plus for us. And, uh, you know, it's good to have him back in the lineup, his bat, and uh, his glove out there in the field. Oh, Travis Darno, first pitch. Deep left field. It is gone. Well, Zach, you brought your battery, made some luck. <laughs> I know. I bet you want to stay on more than one inning, don't you? That's my roommate. <laughs> nice. And he has been on fire since returning from Las Vegas. Now uh, hitting nine of the ten games since he's come back. Yep. What does he talk about? I know he must. Be, I know. I know he's talking good, especially last night. You see that ball right there. He moved close to the plate. Has he talked about that when y'all be at yeah. home relaxing? Yeah, we actually talked about it last night. Um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the pitchers were pitching them away, and so um, you know I told him that that that's what I saw was a lot of pitchers were throwing them away. So he said he screwed it up closer to the plate, and I told him just to keep attacking that outside pitch until uh, until the 
pitchers start making an adjustment, then you, then you can make an adjustment. You know, Zach, you talk about that, you know, I, and one thing I want to ask, because I, I, I used to talk about, we had actually my last time working with Kenny, we talked about uh, me getting some, some help, some advice from Pedro Martinez. What about, what about hitters? Do hitters come to you and give you some advice about certain things that they see from a positional standpoint? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, nobody really comes up to each other and, you know, talks about that kind of stuff unless right. you ask. Um, you know, I may go up to a hitter and, you know, what are you looking for in this kind of situation or in this kind of count? And, uh, you know, they come up to me and ask, you know, what am I throwing in this situation? So it works both ways. Now one and two on Tejada, who singled back in the third inning. When the Mets score two runs on four hits, Mets have trimmed a 5 nothing deficit to 5-3. Travis Darno with his fifth home run of the season, leading off this half inning against Colby Lewis. Tenth home run allowed by Lewis. Now, Zach, we've heard about a couple of your bullpen sessions this season that have been attended by John Smoltz and Clayton Kershaw. First of all, were you nervous with those guys watching, and, and <laughs> do they talk to you after they observed your bullpen sessions? Um, I did talk to Smoltz. Smoltz watched me in the game. He was uh, in the booth working that night in Atlanta. So, um, you know, I grew up watching him, and, you know, it was pretty awesome to talk to him. And he left his number with uh, my pitching coach, Dan Worthen. So, you know, I'm going to try to maybe try to work with him during the offseason. Um, he seemed like a really nice guy. And then uh, Kershaw. He asked TC if he could come out there and watch my bullpen, but I didn't get to talk to him or anything after. So, when you, when you look at this game and, and 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 how many adjustments you have to make from start to start, start, now talk about that and, and, and the mental approach, uh, whether you whether you have a good start or not, just the adjustments going into the next start. Yeah, um, I've had my ups and downs this year, so um, you know hitters are starting to figure me out um, a little bit more and. You know, I'm starting to figure more out about myself. And uh, like you said, going start to start. Um, you know, I do a little bit better against certain teams maybe because we play them a little bit more often, so I know their tendencies. And, uh, you know, it's just making big adjustments or little small adjustments. I mean, um, you know, just watching more video. And I think the biggest thing with me is just, you know, consistency with my command and uh, my mechanics and stuff like that. You know, just being plain and simple with them, not trying to do too much when you're out there, not trying to blow guys away. And that's helped me out a lot. How exciting is it, although you guys are 10 games under 500 at the moment, to be part of this young up-and-coming pitching staff with Matt Harvey, who's obviously out for the season, Noah Syndergaard in AAA, guys like Dylan G and Jonathan Neese as you build something here in New York. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a lot of fun, and um, you know, there's a lot of hype around this, so it's going to be fun when we all actually get together and um, you know start working some magic. And, uh, you know, everybody, everybody's good. Nice. I think he might be one of the most underrated pitchers in the league. Um, you know, then you got Noah in the minor leagues. Harvey, of course, going to come back. And uh, G, you know, he's another guy. And so um, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, Zach, thanks for taking a couple of minutes. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Good luck, buddy. Thanks, guys. All right, Zach Wheeler, the scheduled starter for the Mets tomorrow in the series finale with the Texas Rangers. Bartolo Colon grounded out to the third baseman. Beltre, so now two away for Curtis Granderson. You know, I take away from that a, a, a guy that's making adjustments, but also understands that when he's facing teams that, that are making adjustments with him, he has to be able to do some different things. And that's that's just the maturity. That, that's him maturing and understanding uh, this game. And, you know, that, that if you don't make the adjustments, you will succumb to two guys just beating you up all the time. And I know he's too, he has too good of stuff to let that happen. Granderson with a bloop into the shift. Safe at first. So for the Mets, that is their second infield hit to the right side against the shift. Now, now I would say, I, I would say that that would be a, a knock over the second baseman's head because Ordor is not that tall. So he probably wouldn't have been able to jump for that ball, but you're still talking about a guy reaping the benefits. That's two for two, reaping the benefits of the shift. New York Mets. Branson getting down the line. He's like, I want that hit. Beats it out. Second hit of the night for Curtis Granderson. Double dinner run back in the third inning. Here's Daniel Murphy, who singled his last time up.
Mets chipping away after falling behind 5 nothing. They scored two runs in the third. And have added a run on the Darno Homer here in the fourth. You got to stay in the ball game. You got to keep fighting, especially against a guy like Kobe Lewis. We'll give you opportunity if he gets deep, as we've seen with the pitch count. Uh, start to leave some balls over the plate. A 1 1 to Murphy on the ground to the right side. Odor to first. And that will do it for the Mets in the fourth. But they score a run. Travis Darno, fifth of the season. Full day of MLB action beginning with the Cardinals and Brewers on Fox Sports 1. Then it's baseball night in America on Fox as the Angels take on these Rangers. It's the Pirates and Reds or the Nationals and the Phillies. Our doubleheader gets underway at 3.30 Eastern next Saturday on Fox Sports 1 and then continues at 7 Eastern on Fox. Elvis Andrews flies out to Ligaris in center for the first out of the inning. So here's Alex Rios, one for two, doubled in a run, came around to score in the first. For the Texas Rangers, who have lost six straight. And how about that, Cliff? Oh, look at that. I said, you know, I said hi to her before the game. She's sitting right below us here in the booth. You have at least one fan of the I building, aside one. from David Wright. Listen, I thought I would see more Mets jerseys with Floyd's on them, but that's a Tampa Bay Ray jersey, Kenny. So, got, I mean, I got to appreciate that, right? She's all the way from Tampa. Does David Wright have a Cliff Floyd T-shirt underneath his jersey? I doubt it. No, but you know what? I should have said yeah. If you want some knocks, he better he better put a shirt on with Cliff Floyd. Just, just add a one before the five. That's it. <laughs> the O2 to Rios, Cologne missing away. Cliff, member of the 2006 Mets squad. Tough Division year. Champs. Tough year. That's all I hear when I come back here. You hear Dave Magnum. We talked to him early in the, in the broadcast, and he was talking about his time here. You see a knock from Alex Rios up the middle. 
And, you know, you, you, you look and, and everybody wants to reminisce on, you know, what happened. And 06, of course, get game seven. I can't, I'm not playing. And, you know, you hear that, what, you know, what ifs. And I, I thought for sure it was going to a World Series. Can it just didn't happen? What, you know, you, you, Yadier Molina comes with the big home run. But, you know, our, the Met fans, they remember. You did bad in the ninth inning in that game, right? Yeah, game seven. struck out. So nobody, nobody remembers that. They go, you know what? Beltron. I'm going, yeah, well, I was before him. <laughs> Here's Beltre. <laughs> yeah. Who homered earlier in this game. Right charging across the first to retire Adrian Beltre for out number two. No problem with the shoulder right there. Tough play as he has to come in on it. Show you a look again. See, I'm running about the shoulder. We talked about it from a defensive standpoint. You know, we said backhand, but this is not a backhand play. This is him charging the ball. Still a tough play. Has to reach down with the non-throwing shoulder. Come up with the baseball. But this is a more play that you don't have to think about as you're making it on the run. So that's more of a play we'll see maybe later on in the game where he has a backhand to play and see how, he's, how he comes out of that flat-footed. With two away, here's Martin. 0 for 1 with a walk. Rios, the runner on second with two away. First pitch, left center. Lagaris. So the Rangers retired in the fifth. They lead 5 3. New York Mets here in the bottom of the fifth inning. You look at his charts and career hits by direction, and you, and you see him, a guy that's pulling the ball a little bit more when he first come up, Kenny. He was more of a right center type of guy. And those numbers probably been flipped. You probably would saw 50% over at the right side. Now you, you see him. And it's a big ballpark here at City Field. I talked about it earlier. So maybe he's turned into a more of a pull hitter, which is okay if he's going to hit the ball at the ballpark. Has dealt with some injuries. But that, 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 that hit chart gives you an idea of how guys and, and, and what their, you know, what their way of hitting is and, and how they approach the game, how they approach their bats. Right, 0 for 2 today, fly to center with the bases loaded back in the third inning. You know, it just hit me, Cliff, could the shoulder injury have come from all the years of carrying your luggage? <laughs> Possibility. So I might want to take, I might take a little bit from this, but you know what? He uh, uh, when I had when I had him carrying my luggage, can he pulled it? So I, it wasn't very heavy. So you know, I'm not going. I'm not going to be a part of that. 
That's right. When you were a rookie, luggage yeah. on wheels did not yet exist. Exactly. See, so you know what? He didn't have to act literally put the backpack. I didn't have a backpack. I actually had a nice little bag, and he just pulled it along with his little backpack. So I'm going to put it all on him. Now, when you think back to the early years of your career, whose luggage did you carry? Man, I had so many. Actually, I don't. I, I look back. Maybe it's Larry Walker. Maybe it's Marquise Grissom. I know I carried somebody, but it wasn't for me. It wasn't so much they wanted me to carry luggage, which thank goodness. Um, but it was more on the plane. I never sat down. I would have probably pre <laughs> preferred to carry the luggage as opposed to serving them on the plane their dinners. You carry the tray with your Listen, left hand or your right? I was, uh, well, the left hand. Hoping I, I would drop it so it could tell me sit down, Rook. That was before and after you cleared customs with the Expos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Payoff pitch to right. Well, you talked about his base hits to left field. This one into the gap in left center. Right on his way to second. And he is in. When you talk about him pulling the ball, you see the hit charts. 40% of his balls are to the left side of the, of, of the field. And there you go, a hanging, hanging curve ball. Well, a little slider, he stays up over the plate and D right smashes. Gets the foot down, stays through it nice and easy. So hit by direction, it's 40% to the left side, so I guess the chart don't lie. It's an 11 game hitting streak for David Wright. For the Mets, their third extra base hit of the game. Here's Bobby Abreu, singled in a run with the bases loaded his last time up. Yeah, I like that approach right there, but Bobby Abreu thinking about the bunt. Getting another run on the board is crucial at this point in the game. Still in the fifth inning, so, uh, you know, talking about a veteran presence, he brings that every night. Active leader in two base hits. Right back to Lewis, and right is caught between second and third. Tagged out by Beltre, but good hustle by Abreu. He is in at second. Well, well we're going to see that replay, hopefully. And you see D right in that situation. That, that was great. That was great moving by him. Um, when, when, when you get back, but on the replay, you, you, you want to see this. D. Wright knows he's dead to right, so he sits there. You see him point out to Bobby to get the second base while he makes a move. And this last effort right here by him diving down allows him to stay out of play and Belcher to get that ball to second base for, for two outs. Bobby's upset, but he sees that move by, by David Wright. He says, okay, hold on a second. I'm going to get the second base. And he didn't get the job done, but at least he's in a scoring position still. You work on that in spring training? No, you can't work on that one. Listen, that, that's the cluster right there. You don't want to work on that one. Never work on it. No, but, but, but all you want to do is you, you look at an athlete right there and they write the, his intelligence of the game, and I think that's something you can't teach. When you bring that every day, you see him telling Bobby Brio, get to second base if you can, but by him making that last uh, you know, effort to, to, to get out of the way, it allows Bobby to get in safely. So Abreu at second with one out. Lucas Duda at the plate. An infield single to the second. Struck out with the bases loaded in the third. The Mets 10 games under the 500 mark at 38 and 48. Although their general manager Sandy Alderson said earlier this week we are better than our record indicates. Coming into this game, they had been outscored by only five runs all season. And typically, you don't you don't, you don't listen to that. You, you basically go by the numbers, and, and you know the win loss don't matter. Duda flies out to Rios in right. Now two away. Tonight's game on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. But back to what I was saying about the, the, the run differential and all that. They are close. They are in ball games. You know, you talk about the bullpen being the biggest reason, but the bullpen has made a transition. They've done some different things down there. 
Well, Mejia taking over in the ninth inning. So they're, they're making some changes there in ball games. They have to be able to finish. And, and you look at that and you go, well, you see runs allowed by both teams. And, and you look at the Rangers, and, and that's the big difference and why they're losing. But the Mets are right there in a lot of more ball games than you've seen the Rangers in. Mets have not fared well in one run games. They've lost 17 games in the opponent's last at bat. They've lost the most games in all of baseball when leading earlier. And that's just maturity, getting these young guys to realize that, you know, you have to finish games. You can't start them. You can't be in them midway through. You have to finish. And I think when you look at Terry Collins and what he's done down there in that bullpen, he solidified the eighth and ninth inning. Familiar is down there in the eighth now. And you look at Mejia getting an opportunity to do it. And then, you know, you don't have Bobby Parnell. And I think that's a big thing that you look at in the season. When you lose your closer early on, it doesn't allow you to, 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 to uh, you know, have that, that, that ninth inning solidified. It doesn't have you. Uh, you have to also, you have to find that guy on the fly. And that's the difference. You know, takes one off the mask right here. Foul ball. Ouch. Squares him up. I said the chin. That's just right. In, I mean, that that hurts. Now, keep in mind his history. He missed the entire 2012 season. Suffered a concussion following a foul tip off the mask. Well, that's why you see the trainer runs out there and make sure that, you know, he, he, he attends to him quickly. But you see him messing around with Ron Washington, so he seems to be okay. Thank goodness. They're getting back to the run differential for a second. It's not the be-all and end-all. Because you look at the Yankees, for example, they have a 500 record. They've been outscored by 34 runs this season. Lagares strikes out. Fifth strikeout for Lewis. So Abreu stranded on second. Torino's telling Washington he is all right. <laughs> Body, the official pain reliever of Major League Baseball. And by Burger King. Right now, try the new extra long BBQ cheeseburger. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, I'm getting hungry. Got a little ways to go before I can get something to eat. Can't eat while before the, you know, when I get on telecast, can I can't eat. Nerves, I guess, kick in. I don't know. Just like when I play. Waited until after the game as yeah. a player. How about Torinos? Took that foul tip in the mask, checked out by the trainer and his manager, and leads off the sixth inning with a base hit to left field on the first pitch from Bartolo Colon. Well, I guess he's okay. Come in swinging. Either that or he closed his eyes and swung the bat. 
Well, Major League Baseball's coverage of the All-Star Game festivities begins tomorrow on ESPN with the 2014 Taco Bell All-Star Selection Show at 7 Eastern. And it continues on Monday, July 14th with the Gillette Home Run Derby at 8 Eastern. Leadoff man on for the Rangers for the first time in this game. Here's Carlos Pena. Walked his last time up. No hits in his last 19 at bats. And just 3 for 34 on the season. You look at Carlos coming to this. You know, you talked about not having spring training, talk about being at home, getting a call uh, from the Texas Rangers. I mean, of course, you want to take advantage of the opportunity, but in his defense, uh, he hasn't had a lot of chances uh, to be at the big level. So he's pretty much swimming on the water, trying to find his you know, legs and get up under him. He's played for eight different franchises, an all-star back in 2009. He studied electrical engineering at Northeastern University. Very intelligent. Very intelligent. Got a chance to play with him in 08, and uh, we had a lot of laughs, but uh, you could talk to him about anything off the field. Uh, he, and you, you pretty much figure it out with him. Bartolo Colon has settled down after allowing four runs in the first inning. Rangers with one run on four hits since. Colon, 20 career wins against Texas. That's more than any other pitcher since the franchise moved to Arlington, Texas in 1972. That's something where you just get on a good run and you feel good about against one team. You know, you don't think about who, who's in the lineup. You just go out there and, you know, it's, it's one of those things, the confidence builder. Once you get the confidence, you can just keep going. That's, that's him. That's been his M.O., uh, you know, in, in any jersey he's been in. One and one on Pena. Torinos takes his lead off first. No outs. Top of the sixth inning. Two one from Cologne. Pena pops it into shallow left. Coming on to make the catch is Abreu for out number one. Well, Bartolo Cologne since turning 40. Check out his record cliff: 22 and 10, earned run average under three. Most wins in Mets history after turning 41, and he is third in strikeouts among. Dominican-born pitchers. Well, you look at those two right there, and Pedro Martinez, who I played with coming up and on three different teams, Juan Marshall. You know, you talk about those guys having a big curveballs, big pitches, big secondary pitches. Bartolo's done it pretty primarily with a fastball and being able to move in and up and, and up and down, which is something that you don't see too often. But if you can do it with a fastball, that means you've learned how to pitch in this game. And it's a difference between being a thrower and, and, and being a pitcher. And you talk about, you know, electric fastball. Yeah, it's good to have sometimes, but when it's an effective fastball, as when it counts the most. Among active pitchers, he is third in wins, 197. Trailing only Tim Hudson, who has won 212 games, and CC Sabathia at 208. And we send our best wishes to CC. Yes. Following he's... the news that he received after his minor league rehabilitation outing earlier this week. Odur's bat winds up just shy of first base in foul territory and a terrific play made by Murphy to retire the 20-year-old second baseman as Torinos moves to second. It's always a tough, tough at bat when, when, when you're looking at that, that bat flying over, flying out. Right? Look, you see Lucas Duda look at the bat coming over. Dane Murphy, perfect play. Light, lays out for that ball. You see right there, gets his bearings up under him. Makes the play from the seat. 
So now two away with the pitcher Lewis at the plate. Singled his last time up. Rangers playing in the National League ballpark during interleague play, so no designated hitter. And Lewis flies out to Granderson in right. Torino stranded on second. An eight-pitch sixth for Bartolo Colon. I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Yesterday, the 75th anniversary of Lou Gehrig's iconic luckiest man speech at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, you know, sometimes uh, when you look back and as an ex-player, you wish you had got the opportunity to see some of the greats that ever touched the field, and he's definitely one of those. Major League Baseball had its 30 clubs. Pay tribute yesterday to Lou Gehrig on the 75th anniversary of his speech by joining forces with ALS organizations to raise awareness for the disease otherwise known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Major League Baseball has donated over three hundred thousand dollars to four organizations leading the fight against ALS. Here at City Field five three lead for the Texas Rangers with Travis Darno leading off against Colby Lewis Darno with a solo home run his last time up. Slicing the Rangers lead to two. We talk about strategies and, and, and adjustments as we talk about with, with the young pitcher on the Mets uh, early in the game with Zach Willie. You see Kobe Lewis uh, first second at bat for, for Travis Darno throwing a fastball. He deposits in left field seats. Third at bat comes up two curveballs in a row. Three in a row and the strikes him out. Six strikeout for Lewis. Time for a game break to Los Angeles. Kevin Burkhart. Well, this is a guy that the Mets fans were looking at. How about Nelson Cruz? Went pretty cheap to the Orioles. And here against John Lackey, that is smoked over the monster in Fenway. His 27th, it ties Jose Abreu for the league lead. Still the Red Sox on top, 4-3 to three that game in the fifth. Kenny. All right, thanks, Kevin. What a season for the former Texas <laughs> Ranger. Wow, I mean, Baltimore gets to reap the benefits of that, right? Nobody could have saw that coming, but he got an opportunity to get back on the field with Baltimore and uh, taking full advantage of it. 
Ruben Tejada one for two. Look at the American League East standings. Orioles and Blue Jays in a virtual tie for first. Yankees lost to the Twins today 2-1, so they are now three back. Nobody wants it. It's going to be a tight race, which I love. I love that type of race unless I'm playing in it. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been in a bunch of those. You better believe it. Kirk Neuenheis has come out on deck to hit for Bartolo Colon, who has gone six innings for the Mets. How about Colby Lewis in his last start Monday against the Twins, which was his 14th start of the season? It was his first quality start. Quality start, at least six innings, three earned runs or less. And he's on track once again if he finishes this inning and does not allow more than one earned run because one of the Mets runs back in the third was unearned. It tied the Major League record, Steve Trout with the Mariners back in 88. The most starts at the beginning of the season 13 without a quality start. And, and Lewis, wow. of course, coming back from the two surgeries, elbow surgery in July of 2012 and hip surgery August of last year. So the Rangers easing him back in. Well, it's easing him back in, but you also look at that strikeout right there. And, and, and you see him getting deep into the games. I know his pitch count is up there a little bit, but he's been able to Establish his fastball way. Doug at his home play umpire has been giving him a pitch even on the corner or a little off the corner. And, and and he's in a position where he can give you that quality start. We talked to Ron Washington before the game, Kenny, and the one thing he said was he's not in a position to go deep in games because he gets so many pitches and you know early and early uh, and you have to take him out by the third or fourth inning. And now with nobody on base after back to back strikeouts, Cologne will bat. As Terry Collins had sent Newman Heist. Out into the on-deck circle. So with Cologne at the plate, we take you back to a game Cliff you referred to earlier, June 18th. Cologne against Lance Lynn, the first extra base hit of his career. He would come around to score later in the inning. His first run since 2002 as he loses his batting helmet on that swing. Yo, he, he's fun to watch. I'll tell you that. You look back at that game in St. Louis. I gave it away a little, little earlier, but you see this hack. I mean, he wants to annihilate that baseball. He loses his helmet. Hey, I'll take that swing. Kobe Lewis saying, hey, hold on. <laughs> should I throw him this fastball again? Now the 0-2, and Cologne gets the bat on it. Torino fires to first, and Cologne is retired. <laughs> <laughs> See a little pep in the step for Bartolo. <laughs> Sits in the books from City Field. Cologne's gotten the bat on the ball three times tonight. <laughs> Look at that swing.
David Wright in his return after missing seven consecutive games. One for three at the plate, doubled in the fifth inning. Robinson Chirinos, a three-run shot in the four-run Texas Rangers first inning. Colby Lewis has allowed three runs, two earned through six. And Bartolo Colon will pitch into the seventh. Allowed four runs in the first, one over the last five innings. Facing the top of the order, Shin Su Chu leading off for the Rangers. He is 0 for 3 tonight. You look at the big shot from Torino's. He has a three run home, but you talk about Bartolo being able to settle down and at least give his teammates uh, a, a chance. And I think that's, that's always key when you talk about quality starts and things like that. Bartolo Colon is a guy that wants the ball late into the game. Colon has allowed only five base runners over the last five innings since the Torino's home run on the first. That's all you can ask for. All you, all you can ask for your starting pitchers give you a chance every single night. They step, they, they step on the mound, and uh, Bartolo has been a guy. His last five, six starts has been a guy that you can count on for sure. Especially after the Mets bullpen forced to get 26 outs yesterday after the ball, which hit Nice in the first inning, and he was removed from the game. Much to his chagrin. Yeah. <laughs> Did not want to come out. He said he was all right. Yeah, he felt like he felt like he was 100%. But you know what? With his history, uh, Ray Ramirez, the, the head athletic trainer for the Mets, wanted to just, by, for cautious reasons, get him out the ball game. Right. They did not want to take any chances. Due to, to the back himself to retire, too. Extraordinary moments happen every night in baseball, but on one night, they all happen in one place. Don't miss the 85th All-Star Game, Tuesday, July 15th, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on Fox. Fox Sports 1 with All-Star coverage beginning at 4.30 Eastern live from Minneapolis. Of course, the All-Star Game last year took place right here at City Field. Oh, yeah, and I was, a big, I was a part of it. Brought my son out, and we was able to come down on the field and watch uh, the home run derby and Cespedes uh, did his thing and that was that was good for him and you know it, it, it's just the atmosphere was electric you come in this ballpark and balls flying all over the place it was really hot though I remember and yes it was yeah my son came to me and said dad you know what I'm good I'm good with the all-star I'm, I'm good with the you know home run derby we <laughs> want to go to the game tomorrow I was like thank you <laughs> thank you son Elvis Andrews, one for three, doubled and scored back in the first inning. A look at the leaders in fan balloting in the National League. Well, I got a chance to pick my, my squad the other day on air, and, uh, you know, I, that, that's, that's, that's a baseball squad. It's not the Masters. You don't see the big, you know, the, the big homers, but you see baseball players. You see excitement. Carlos Gomez. McCutcheon and Puig in outfield. I'll take that any day. And then Tulo, being on the field consistently this year, uh, goes to show you when he's on the field, he's best player in the game. One up D. And Cliff over in the American League. See, I talked about the Masters. Right here you go with the Masters. Uh, you know, you, you, you look at Batista, Cespedes, Nelson Cruz from the DA standpoint, being the fact that they're in the American League field and, and Target Field in Minnesota. Josh Downs is still leading, them, though he's, felt, he's cooled off a little bit of late. And the captain, Derek Jeter. Of course, his last All-Star game of his career. Two and two on Elvis Andrews. One out. Top of the seventh inning. Texas Rangers with a 5-3 lead on the Mets. Texas looking to end a six-game losing streak. They've dropped 10 straight on the road. Too shy of their franchise record. Set back in 2003. Well, he's a big part of it. We talked about Elvis Andrews and, and the big contract he signed. Had a chance to talk to Washington for the game. And 
you know, you, you, sometimes these youngsters try to justify the contracts and try to go out there and, and, and carry the load when teams are, are struggling a little bit. Tejada over to Duda. Andrews is retired. Well, last July here at City Field, the 2013 All-Star Game, and it was Mariano Rivera who provided the most memorable moment when he came into the game in the eighth inning. Cheered by the crowd, players in both dugouts, and Rivera was named the game's most valuable player. You talk about the one, one of the best to ever do it right there. Uh, never fun facing him. You see the, 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 the respect he demands. Everybody loved uh, when, when that guy was, you know, was playing the game. And, uh, you know, he will be missed, I'll tell you that. Certain guys come around uh, in this game, and when they leave, uh, they leave a mark. He's definitely left a mark on this game. How would you approach facing Rivera when you stepped into the batter's box against him? Get the first thing you see, the straight. And it was never straight, Kenny. It was never straight. <laughs> but you know what? You hoped it was. It's amazing, right? You, you talk about one pitch through a cutter, and then... When he did throw his fastball straight, uh, it, it, it would surprise you. So that's what made him so good that, you know, you, you sort of anticipated him throwing a cutter, and he would shock you with the fastball every once in a while that was just straight 92 miles an hour. He was awesome. One, two to Rios. Base hit into left field. Third hit of the game for Alex Rios, who had been just six for his last 39 coming in. Yeah, he's he been scuffling a little bit, but when you look at Alex Rios, he's a guy that's been around, a veteran, uh, having a decent season uh, when, when you look at this Texas Rangers team and, and uh, one that's haven't been playing well. He's been a bright spot uh, throughout the first half, actually. Here's Adrian Beltre, who took Cologne deep back in the third inning. Beltre has now hit six home runs off Cologne, more than he's hit off any other pitcher in his major league career. You think you see him, you think you see him well? <laughs> As he takes a big hack on the curve. And, that, and that's the one thing you look at and you go, well, why does a guy have so much success off one pitcher? And it's because of, of situations like that when you can anticipate uh, what he's going to throw. And you look at that curveball right there. Beltre knew that Bartolo wasn't going to challenge him with a fastball right there and took a big old hack on, on the off-speed pitch. Rios goes. Here's the throw from Darno, And Rios is in with his 14th steal of the season. Good jump. I was watching at first. He was taking a little bit more, a little bit more, and he, just, he was reading Bartolo wanting to just get this out at the plate and not paying too much attention to him over at first base. By the way, the two pitchers that you had the most success against as far as both home runs and runs battered in, want to take a guess? I, I, I think I know this one. Chen Ho Park is one. He was one. I have no clue. Who Robert Person. Robert Person. He won. See, like, and, and talk about anticipating things. Well, Robert Person used to throw me first pitch fastballs all the time. And I knew that and I tried to jump him. But Chen Ho Park... I think I was just in his dome. I think he I think he would tell me what was coming. You had four home runs, 11 RBIs against both. Career batting average of 417 against Chan Ho Park. I'll take it. And by the way, you were two for eight against Mariano <laughs> Rivera. Not bad. 250 average. I'll take that one as well. Trust two me. for eight with a double. I think I'll take that over the four home runs <laughs> and live off the other guys. He's going to the Hall of Fame. I'll take those. Knox. There's the one two to Beltre. Ouch. And he got a piece of it. He got a piece of himself as well. Ow. Back foot. That'll leave a mark. You know the feeling. Y'all better believe I do. Now the eight home runs by Rodriguez. Most allowed by Cologne. But Beltre has hit his six. And that is the most he has hit against any opposing pitcher. These stats start to get your head spinning a little bit. 
<laughs> Don't you like, hey, man, get out of there. See him. Side relief right there. Like, I missed that back foot on the outswing. He's like, thank goodness. See him stumbling and try to grab the bat. <laughs> Cologne up to 105 pitches, but Terry Collins told us before the game, 120 is no problem for Bartolo. Nothing. Rubber arm, as he says with this big guy. His season high is 121. His career high, 139. Another foul. Cologne has thrown at least 130 pitches 12 times in his career, but the last time, 2003. Yeah, it's been a while. But you're still talking about a guy that goes out there and wants, you know, wants the ball late into the ball game. You see Danny Murphy comes in and gives him some, <laughs> some encouraging words as Bartolo gives him a little chuckle. You saw Gonzalez, her men, and Josh Edgen up in the Mets' pen. Cologne allowed four runs in the first inning. Torinos with a three-run shot. One run on five hits since. Another foul. Beltre has fouled off five pitches from Cologne. This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat. He sees them very well. And, that, and that, that's just, you know, confidence over the years of facing them, knowing tendencies and things like that. And he has seen them a lot. Yeah. 73 career at bats. Yet ah. another foul. He got the dogs again. Those dogs being his feet. He's like, hey, now, enough of that. 20 for 73. With six home runs off Cologne for Adrian Beltre. Those are sick numbers. Just gets one of the best. We talked about his numbers and him being around as long as he's been around. Those are tremendous numbers. Both competitors, both want the ball. Him wanting to beat you every time he steps in that batter's box. This is going to show you how big of a pro he is. Yet another foul. 13th foul ball this half inning. And that'll get that pitch count up. Tenth pitch of the at bat. <laughs> They'll try, try to <laughs> skip away from Darno. Mets headed off the field. The strikeout ends the inning. Seventh inning stretch time here at City Field.
Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Here's to Budweiser. Here's to baseball. That by the new Samsung Galaxy S5. The next big thing is here. Beautiful Saturday evening in New York. Kenny Albert, Cliff Floyd from City Field. Bottom of the seventh inning. Five runs on eight hits, one error for the Rangers. Three runs, eight hits for the Mets. 34-year-old left-hander Neil Kotz out of the Texas pen. His 41st appearance after the starter, Colby Lewis, went six innings, allowed three runs, two earned on eight base hits. Kotz will face the top of the order, Curtis Granderson leading off, and he takes a called strike. Nothing at one. Granderson with two hits today, doubled in a run back in the third inning. You talk about a guy in Neil Kotz, one of two reliable pitches out of that bullpen that Ron Washington trusts, him and, and the other one being Jason Frazier. Right hand. Rangers called up Neftali Feliz yesterday. And he pitched the sixth and seventh innings for the Rangers last night. Yeah, they're going to bring him along slowly so he can adjust and get his feet up under him. And I think that's, all, that's always big to get his confidence back. You're talking about a big arm from Neftali Feliz. Now he's learning how to pitch and maybe possibly go longer than one inning. Uh, what you've seen in the past when he's a closer. Now two and two as Granderson gets back up onto his feet. Yeah, that's a tough. That's a, that's a tough pitch always as a lefty on lefty matchup, Kenny. When you when you're trying to keep that shoulder in there as long as you can, so you don't pull out, and that ball is rising there, and you go, hey, bring it to your knees a little bit. He's like, yeah. That's, that's that eye level of Torino, so he had a good conversation with him. <laughs> Granderson down on strikes. One away here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, tomorrow, two legends step into the octagon as third rank Frankie Edgar takes on BJ Penn in the epic. Ultimate Fighter finale live from Las Vegas. Covers begins with the pre-fight show at 6.30 Eastern as part of Red, White, and Fight Week on Fox Sports 1, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Here's Daniel Murphy. Murphy is one for three. You mentioned that conversation between Granderson and Torino. Who are some of your favorite catchers to chat with? Well, you know what? You didn't chat too much with him. Uh, I, I think the one conversation I had that actually wasn't a great conversation was A.J. Brzezinski. You know, he was one of a, a guy that was a talker. And, and another one was when he played with the Chicago Cubs, uh, Joe Girardi, manager of the Yankees. Really? Always, always having a conversation about something. Maybe trying to get in my head as a youngster back in his days, you know, when I, when, when I saw him in Colorado and in Chicago. But, you know, it's, it, it, it didn't work. Because I, it was one of those things where I was like, listen, he's trying to get in my head. He's trying to show out. I'm, I'm going to block him out. A couple of Chicago guys. Yeah. yeah. Second consecutive strikeout for Cots. Andrew Murphy not happy about it. Look at this pitch by Neil Cots. Doug has been there consistently all night. Dane Murphy might not be happy about it. Height-wise, it was good. I don't know if it was on the plate as much as Daniel Murphy would like it to be, but Doug Edis has been, you know, consistent, to say the least, tonight. So now with two away, here's David Wright. Mets have struck out nine times in the game. They have not thrown a walk. How about Colby Lewis? In his last three starts, he has now struck out 21 and has not walked a batter. Diving stop by Pena. Cots covering, and Wright is retired. Great play by Carlos Pena there. Tremendous diving stop as the Mets are retired on 10 pitches in the seventh.
Rangers lead the Mets 5-3. 27-year-old left-hander Josh Edgen will make his 23rd appearance for the Mets this season. He has not allowed a run in his last 12 appearances. And he has retired all 22 first batters he has faced. So that is not good news for <laughs> Leonis Martin, who no, squares the bunt and takes strike one. No, you know what? And I think the big thing when you talk about Edgen is the fact that he comes in and he's facing a lefty, and he's done a tremendous job of getting lefties out of the well. And I think that's the, the when you look at the matchups, can you, that's the big thing for Terry Collins. Is can you get lefties, you know, out when you come into ball games and do your job? So Mets starter Bartolo Colon went seven innings. Allowed five runs on eight hits. Four of the five Texas runs coming via the long ball. Not only is he get, coming in and getting the first hitter out, but lefties are hitting a buck 03 against him. That's 103. Three for 29. Wow. So he's done a good job of coming in and getting lefties out, and that's that's the key for a lefty you know, reliever is can you do your job when you come in the game late? Edgen did not pitch in last night's game, which took four hours, eight minutes. Did they have a rain delay? <laughs> well, the Rangers did two nights ago, so they've had a couple of long nights. Yeah. Rain delay in Baltimore. And then they took a bus because of all the bad weather and flight delays. Rangers decided, well, instead of getting on a bus in Baltimore, going to the airport, waiting on the plane, more waiting, then getting on a bus to head to the hotel in New York, Let's just take the bus all the way through, and Ron Washington said it worked out very well. Listen, that's when you love your traveling secretary. Martin is retired, so Edgen has now retired all 23 first batters he has faced. The man on the right, the architect of the 1986 World Series champion Mets, Frank Cashin, the general manager of the Mets from 1980 through 1991. Passed away this past week. He drafted Dwight Gooden and Daryl Strawberry, traded for Keith Hernandez, Gary Carter. He hired manager Davey Johnson, inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame back in 2010. Frank Cashin passed away on Monday at the age of 88. And the Mets players and coaches are wearing a memorial patch just below the patch honoring the life of longtime Mets broadcaster and baseball Hall of Famer Ralph Kiner. Yep, some some big names right there, especially when you look at the some of the players uh, that he brought in. The late great Gary Carter is one of them, uh, and, and and then of course when you look at the '86 World Series, Kim, you'll always be remembered here in New York City when you do good, good things like that, and uh, you may rest as we move forward. We chatted with Dave Magadan, the Rangers hitting coach earlier. He was drafted by Frank Cashin. Back in 1983. Frank Cashin, a former sports writer and also longtime member of the Baltimore Orioles front office. In fact, he was with the Orioles when they lost to the Mets in the 1969 World Series. Had a good eye for some, some good talent, huh? Sure did. Wow. And it was Davey Johnson who made the last out of that 69 World Series who would manage the Mets to their title in 86. One and two on Chirinos, who hit a three-run home run off Cologne back in the first inning. Now, speaking of general managers, the Rangers' terrific young general manager, John Daniels, grew up here in Queens, a couple of minutes from City Field and the former home of the Mets, Shea Stadium. We are told John is not... In the ballpark tonight, but he and his family were huge New York Mets fans, especially in 1986. Yeah, well, you know, going back then, but you look at John Daniels today, pretty odd he's not in town. Maybe maybe he's here watching it with family. Not just at the ballpark, right? Well, if any of the Daniels family is here, they received a Mets floppy hat on the way into the ballpark. <laughs> I gotta give me one. I gotta give me a couple of those. I can't go home empty-handed. 
think you have some connections here. Bounce foul back behind third. My kids were so big on those. Even though they don't remember dad playing the game, Kenny, they remember all the giveaways. You know, whatever that be. Dad, you remember I got, yeah, I remember. Because, you know, they, they, those are keepsakes. They have those, you know, they have the teddy bears with the number, you know, one five on it. As you see, the floppy hats right there. Yeah, you would look good at one of those. Yeah, you know, look at that. It's nighttime. My man got his glasses on with the floppy hat. It's always been <laughs> funny, you know. 2-2 Two -two to Torinos. And he is down on strikes. First strikeout for Josh Edgen. Well, MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out-of-market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit MLB.com for details. And you can follow every game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv, game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit MLB.com today. Carlos Pena sends this one into the left field corner. Extra bases for Pena, who breaks out of an 0-for-20 slump with his fourth hit of the season. You see, he's thankful for that. He comes out of that, and I mean, he hasn't had a, you know, a hit in a long time, and to get off the snide a little bit, as they say in this game, uh, is always big. I don't care, uh, you know, what part of the game is in. Here is late off a lefty. Always confidence building. We saw Dan Worthen, Mets pitching coach, on the phone to the bullpen. There's Rudnet Odor. With Pena on at second, Odor has not hit the ball out of the infield in his three at-bats against Cologne tonight. Now facing the much younger Josh Edgen. <laughs> Getting the guy he might know. Yeah, closer to his age. <laughs> Gonzalez per man. Up and throwing in the Mets pen. Edgen on in relief of Cologne. Retired the first two Rangers here in the eighth, and then the double off the bat of Carlos Pena. fastball from edging right there coming in at 94 miles an hour that's always tough for for, for a lefty on lefty matchup you know when you look at old door here that ball's coming in there hard you're trying to stand there and slap that ball to the left side just, just just so you can have a little you know mindset to say you know what I, I don't want to pull this ball I want to stay middle away when it's coming in that hard you don't have that much time to react One and two on Odor. Rangers minor league player of the year last season. And when I talk about slacking to the left side, I'm talking about everybody. I'm talking about power hitters, slap hitters, doesn't matter. Odor with a base hit into left center. Pena around third, heading home. Throw to the plate, the tag by Darno, and Pena is out. An assist for Lagaris. The tag by Darno. And it comes to an end. Pena attempting to score on the Odor base hit.
and 14 25 years ago tonight. The debut it was called the Seinfeld Chronicles that night. Okay. When the show debuted. Jerry Seinfeld, a huge Mets fan. Keith Hernandez appeared on the show. And tonight, the Brooklyn Cyclones, the Mets affiliate in single A. They play over in Coney Island. They are celebrating the anniversary of the first episode of the Seinfeld show. And Keith Hernandez bobbleheads were given out to the first 2,500 fans. Players wearing puffy shirts, Cliff, during mm -hmm. batting practice. There is a low-talking public address announcer. That could be me today. And, and anyone named George Costanza <laughs> was allowed to join the radio broadcast as a color analyst <laughs> for at least one inning. Now, listen, that's being creative. You know, as we see Terry Collins comes out to see something from Doug Eddins, the home plate umpire, but that's being creative. I got a chance to go over to Brooklyn. It was a fun time over there, Kenny, to see, you know, to see how they interact and all the fans come out. And uh, it was one of the, the, the nice affiliates uh, for, the, for the New York Mets. But you never took part in the hot dog eating contest in no, Coney Island. You know what? You got to have a name to do all the hot dog contest eating. Well, I don't know if you have a name for that, but to get a bobblehead over in Brooklyn, you got you, you got to done something. Keith Hernandez is a, is a big staple here in New York City. Uh, you know, rightfully so to get the bobblehead night. And it actually looked like a nice bobblehead. You know, normally they mess up the hair. <laughs> Put a hat on it. So a big night over in Brooklyn. There it is. Here's Chris Young pinch hitting for Bobby Abreu against the left-hander Neil Kotz. Young batting just 199 this season. He is one for ten as a pinch hitter. This is something he's going to have to take, you know, in the cages and, and, and sort of ask some questions. When, when, when you have Lamar Johnson, the hit instructor, th th those are things you have to run past him to sort of get yourself into this mode of how can you pinch it? Because Terry Collins is going to lean on him at some point late in the games if you're not going to play every day. Of course, that's going to be uh, sparingly now that you have Lagares taking over in center field. His natural position, Chris Young. Another pinch hitter, Eric Campbell, waiting on deck. He has been on fire at the plate as of late. Well, he got a chance to play. I think that was huge for him. I know, you know, it's unfortunate with David Wright being out the lineup, but he got a chance to go over third base and play while he was out and did a really good job. Three balls, one strike. Chris Young leading off for the Mets here in the bottom of the eighth inning. All right, fastball in for strike two. Young fouls it back. He has seven home runs, Cliff, this season. Four have come during interleague play in only seven games. Well, you know, sometimes these pitchers don't get a chance to see him when they come over from interleague, and he can hit a fastball. He's been one of the those youngsters that came up real fast in the Arizona Diamondbacks organization moved around a little bit, but still has some talent left in them. Played in the American League last season with Oakland. Fouls it off back behind third after seven years in Arizona. He was an all-star back in 2010, but he drove in a career-high 91 runs. You know, Kenny, every once in a while as a, as a broadcaster, you become a rookie again, and I forget he played in Oakland. That's why you sort of, you know, you, you think American League, you think National League. Well, I've seen him in the National League so much, I forget that he was over in, in, in Oakland and did a good job there before he came over to the Mets. Payoff pitch from Cox, another foul. And this National League is a little bit different than American League. You don't see a lot of substitutions. You don't see a lot of pinch hitting in the American League because of the DH. You come over to the National League, you start double switching. You know, you start, you start pinch hitting late in the games for the pitchers. And this is where the bats accumulate for guys like Chris Young, uh, unfortunately, at this point in his career. Ninth pitch of the at bat from Cots. Missing inside, ball four, so Young draws a leadoff walk. Tonight's game on Fox is sponsored by Burger King. Right now, try the new extra long BBQ cheeseburger. And by Chevrolet. Five new roads. Eric Campbell announced as the pinch hitter. 
Ron Washington to the mound. Sean Tollison in the Rangers pen, and Washington calls for the right hander. The game for the Texas Rangers making his 36th appearance. He will face pinch hitter Eric Campbell. Hitting for Lucas Duda. Campbell. Has been terrific at the plate with the Mets this season 37 games batting 340. He's 13 for his last 28 during a seven game hitting streak when filling in for the injured David Wright. Yeah, he got a chance to play and took full advantage of it, which is always good to see when guys, you know, get the opportunity. And you talk about a guy, as we look at it on the mound, Sean Tolleson has given up a major league leading nine homers thus far. Campbell, the Norwich, Connecticut native out of Boston College, seventh year in the Mets organization. With Chris Young on at first. And the first pitch from Tolleson missing away, ball one. Take a look over at Chris Young getting some help from first base base coach Tom Goodwin fast base run himself back in the day and trying to get a good read on on toss Campbell fouls it off to the right side and Tom Goodwin stole 50 or more bases Four different seasons career high 66 with the Royals in 1996. He's always good. He's always good to be able to, to run some things things by. I want to send my condolences to him and his family lost their son. Uh, he missed a, a few days. First day back in about 10 days. So good to see him back on the field. Whispering into the ear of Chris Young. Tell him hey. Pick up something. If you don't, you better pick it up. I want you to go sooner than later.
Young holds. And Tomlinson missing away. Now three and one. Top of the hour. Ten o'clock. Here in the east from City Field. Kenny Albert, Cliff Floyd. Bottom of the eighth inning. With the Texas Rangers leading the New York Mets 5-3. No scoring since the fourth inning. Rangers scored four in the first off Bartolo Colon. Now the 3-1. Big swing by Campbell. Full count. You can be as hot as you want. You talk about a guy in Eric Campbell getting a chance to play while David Wright was out for a few days. But now you sit there for three and a half hours as a pinch hitter. And it's just not the same approach. You, know, you try to keep it the same routine, but it's just not. Payoff pitch from Tollison. Ball four. Second consecutive walk. So the Mets with runners on first and second and nobody out. Well, Major League Baseball's coverage of the All-Star festivities begins tomorrow on ESPN with the Taco Bell All-Star Selection Show at 7 Eastern and continues on Monday, July 14th with the Gillette Home Run Derby at 8 Eastern. Two walks in the inning. Texas pitchers did not issue a walk over the first seven innings tonight. There's pitching coach Mike Maddox. Well, you talk about losing ball games, coming in losing six in a row. Well, this is how you do it. You know, you, you start walking guys, and before you know it, you let the team back into the, the opposing team back into the game. Juan Lagares, 0 for 3. He has struck out twice. Rounded out with the bases loaded back in the third inning. Travis Darno, Homer back in the fourth. He waits on deck. Chris Young, the runner on second. Eric Campbell over at first. Rangers lead the Mets 5-3. No outs, bottom of the eighth inning. Lagaris squares the bunt and takes strike two. And these are little things Terry Collins talked about before the game. You have to be able to do a little things right to win ball games. I know he has a he has a young squad. He's sitting there talking to Tim Tuffle, the third base coach, and maybe yeah, talking, maybe you want to go talk to him and tell him, you know, whether he wants in this situation. Being 0-2, you, you don't necessarily see a guy score around, but these guys have to move up uh, to give the Mets a chance to win this ballgame or get back into this ballgame. Laguerre swinging away. And he grounds into the 4-6-3 double play. The last thing they need in that situation. See the great play by Odor stays with it. Nice toss over to Elvis Andrews for the easy throw to first. It's going to complete the 4 6 3. Mike Maddox, his brother Greg, will be inducted into the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown later this month. Tremendous pitcher. I, now I had a chance to face him a lot being a National League pretty much my whole career. I, faced my, I just tried to take my, my aggression out on Mike Maddox <laughs> when I faced him. <laughs> Because his brother used to do me so bad. I'm sure he appreciated it. <laughs> so here's Travis Darno with two outs and Chris Young over at third. Take you back to the fourth inning. Darno taking Colby Lewis deep, his fifth home run of the season. Darno now with a hit in nine of ten games since coming back from Triple A Las Vegas. 
You see that fastball up in that in, in, right there, and he jumped all over that pitch. Left field. Chu makes the catch. And the Mets are retired in the eighth. They had two on, nobody out. Could not capitalize. Sports Supports is especially proud to recognize the Army's Gold Star Pin Campaign, which honors the families of fallen service members. To learn more, visit goldstarpins.org. We move to the ninth here at City Field. Daniel Robertson pinch hitting for Sean Tolleson. Chris Young remains in the game in left field. Eric Campbell. Remains in the game at first base. Robertson fouls it off to the right side. Robertson acquired by the Rangers from the San Diego Padres back on April 23rd. Batting 226 in 24 games. One for two as a pinch hitter. See some of these guys wearing that shield over their face. Coming from steaming from a you know ball getting getting close to that face and no one that, that to happen again. We see a couple guys, Jason Hayward wore one, and now we see uh Daniel Robinson wear it. Yeah, he was involved in a collision back in late May in Detroit. Collision with Alex Rios in the outfield, suffered non-displaced fractures in his face. So Robertson on it first with a pinch single. Here's Shin Su Chu, who is 0 for 4 tonight. Rangers scored four runs in the first inning off Bartolo Colon. First time the Rangers scored as many as four. In the first inning since September of 2012, 256 games. On the ground to the second baseman, Murphy. 
And the Mets turn to the 4-6-3 double play. Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball, presents the walk-off. Great walk-offs are waiting at foxsports.com slash Budweiser. Grab some buds. Terry Collins out to the mound. Here comes Gonzalez Hermen from the Mets pen with two outs in the top of the ninth inning. pitch for the Mets after Josh Edgen went an inning in two thirds. Her men facing Elvis Andrews one for four tonight. 20th appearance out of the bullpen for her men. Looking ahead the Mets have Tejada the pitcher spot and Granderson do up in the bottom of the ninth trailing by two and talk about this Mets bullpen Kenny and, and, and you look at the last 59 plus innings for these guys they've held their opponents to 11 earned runs that equals out to a 1.67 ERA some nice adjustments bullpen terrific last night allowing only two earned runs in eight and two thirds after the injury suffered by Jonathan Neese in the first inning. That probably played a big part in that, <laughs> that redu reduction. Our men strikes out Andrus. We head to the bottom of the ninth from City Field as the Texas Rangers look to end their six game losing streak.
Torino's the King play of the day brought to you by Burger King. Top of the first inning. Rangers had already taken a 1-0 lead. Torino's takes Bartolo Colon deep. A three-run shot. This extended the Texas lead cliff to 4-0. Yeah, he took a fastball away. We talked about Bartolo Colon hit in 90% of the time throwing that fastball. He stayed out of the plate. Torino's made him pay. Now Ruben Tejada leading off against the Rangers closer Joaquin Soria. 15 for 16 and save opportunities this season for the two-time All-Star, the former Kansas City Royal. Robertson remains in the game in left field. As Tejada fouls it off to the right side. Kirk Neuenheis has come out into the on-deck circle with the pitcher spot due up next. We talk about Soria uh, and, 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 and what he features in his arsenal of pitches. Not the flamethrower. Up the middle. Fielded by Andrews. So Tejada is retired. One away. Not the flamethrower you, you see typically coming out of the bullpen late. But he knows how to pitch. And I think that's the one thing when we look at being 15 or 16. Doesn't come in throwing 95 to 98 miles an hour. But comes in with a big curveball we saw in the first pitch to, to Tejada. And then they're able to come back with a 91 mile fastball. And it makes it look like it's 98 because of the stuff he features. Soria pitching for the first time in six days. He has not been needed with the Rangers in the midst of a six game losing streak. So here's Newenheis, 3 4 11 as a pinch hitter this season. Great job by our entire crew producer Carol Langley, director Jim Lynch, associate director Brian Biederman, broadcast associate Ben Toter, technical producer Sid Drexler. Marty Aronoff and Joe Band crunching the numbers for us tonight here at City Field. One out, bottom of the ninth inning. A 1 1 from Soria, fouled back. Now one and two. Extraordinary moments happen every night in baseball, but on one night, they all happen in one place. Don't miss the 85th All-Star Game, Tuesday, July 15th, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on Fox. Fox Sports 1's All-Star coverage begins at 4.30 Eastern, live from Minneapolis. The one-two to the pinch hitter, Neuenheis, a base hit down the left field line. Racing over to field it is Robertson. Neuenheis is in with a stand-up double. Nice piece of hitting by Neuenheis right there. You know, you, you, you look at the, the defense right there, and you see Neuenheis stay on that ball. Doesn't try to do too much with it. Slaps it down left field line for, for a double. Nice little reach piece. See this reach? You see Beltre is off the line. When I talk about the defense, has a lot of room to work with. Just slaps it down for a nice little one-out double. You see the rally tiles coming in the mess dugout. So now Curtis Granderson. Granderson two hits today. Drove in a run. Four for 14 lifetime against Soria. Potential tying run at the plate. New and Heist takes his lead off second. One out, bottom of the ninth inning. see the depth of the outfielders here Kenny no doubles for the outfielders but you look at the infield totally different shade over to the right not that big of a shift and that pitch gets away from Torino's but it would high sets back to second but back to the defense and, and how Ron Washington is set he'll give up the base hit in the infield 
but he doesn't want to give up the double in the outfield. So he plays the outfield a little bit deeper, but he has the infield play regular depth. Now Torino sets out for a chat with Soria. Mets have had some opportunities after falling behind early. They left the bases loaded in the third. They had two on, nobody out in the eighth. Could not score. Trail by two. One out, bottom of the ninth inning. The one two to Granderson, and he pops it up to the left side. Out of play, just out of the reach of Adrian Beltre, the he second time twice. as well. He missed it twice, <laughs> Beltre. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to catch it on the carom. I tell you what, if there's one thing he does do, I know they I know they've been losing a little bit. He has fun. He, he enjoys the game. <laughs> it's good to see. He's man, it's like, yes. One more shot at this. Sorry, you're missing high. Now two and two. Daniel Murphy waiting on deck. Granderson pops it up. This time it is playable for Beltre. Does not need a second chance. He makes the catch to retire Granderson. So the Mets now down to their final out as Daniel Murphy steps in. You see how much fun these guys have. I know they're losing, but you see Andrews messing with him like he's going to catch that ball, and Belcher's like, man, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Smiles on their faces. I know they're losing, but you still got to have fun in this game. They're winning tonight. And that's the key. You, know, you, you have fun when you win in ball games, and you keep it light for the other guys to see. The youngsters. They've only won two of the last 16. Daniel Murphy, one for four. Barry Collins Mets fell behind 4 0 early. Trailed 5 0 when they came to bat in the third. Scored two in the third. Added a run of the fourth. But that has been it. That face tells it all, pretty much in terms of what we talked about earlier. That looked like a strike to me. Nice with a pinch double. Granderson popped out for the second out of the inning. And now the one two from Soria. Murphy down on strikes. The Texas Rangers end their six game losing streak. Their 10 game road losing streak comes to an end as well. Texas scores four in the first. Torino's a three-run shot. They defeat the Mets five to three. We'll return to City Field after these messages.